water harvesting would be the collection of different water sources. Uh, what fog and cloud water collection or water harvesting, which is what we do at Permolution, uh, falls under. It's atmospheric water harvesting or atmospheric water conversion. Uh, so we take water, in our case, from the sky, uh, from clouds and fog, and we turn it into water. There are different practices. Uh, rainwater, it's also water harvesting. Atmospheric water through humidity, it's also water harvesting. Uh, so there are different types. And our main focus, it's fog and clouds. Because I think I'm personally familiar. I've had a water barrel before for rain. We can capture it that way. But I've never really thought of capturing fog. Could you speak to what that even looks like? Because you feel like it's maybe so intangible. I think we can all feel holding rain, but maybe not so much holding fog. So what does that look like? As rain is considered vertical precipitation, fog and clouds are considered horizontal precipitation. And we can collect up to three times more water than rain. By definition, fog and clouds are made of tiny particles that are suspended in the air. And we're on a mission to introduce this new water source through our work class technology uh, that help us collect the water that otherwise, unlike rain, fog and clouds, if we don't collect it, it goes back into the atmosphere through temperature change and is lost from the local hydric cycle. The reality is we're, we're experiencing these extreme weather conditions and climate change, and it's really just intensifying with time. California is a perfect example of that. How do you see these new solutions playing a role in supporting these problems as we're increasingly seeing water strapped areas, whether it is California or elsewhere around the world, like what role do you see this type of new technology playing in providing hope? We see it as a very central um, solution for all the trends that we see in climate, national security, and dialing back a little bit to what you said, some of these uh, techniques might have been around for many, many generations and years, which is true. Fog and cloud water collection is as old as rainwater collection. We are innovating on it, adding algorithm, uh, measuring tools, sensors, advanced materials. Uh, but at the end of the day, yes, we're going back to the best engineering engineer of, of them all, Mother Nature. Uh, what we do, it's the biomimicry of what sequoias, redwoods would do. Uh, they're so tall because they irrigate on fog and clouds. And this process of adhering the, the droplet suspended in the air and using it as a water source, it's, it's the biomimicry that we do in our technology at the end of the day. So these nature-based solutions are in my opinion, what it's going to be the key. There is no one size fits all. There's no one solution that will fix a, a problem, especially the magnitude that we see nowadays. But a combination of these different solutions, especially based around nature-based solutions, going back to a symbiotic relationship uh, with the planet, it's what I wish for in how the, we deploy our solution and other nature-based solutions. Along with carbon sequestration, they all help. But we need a combination of them all. If let's say we were explaining it to, we'll say my 10-year-old nephew, how would you explain your, your tech setup when you're going in onto a site? Because I know you've been able to be able to set up all around the world. It's separated in three units or three steps. First, we have what we call the fog atlas. This is an algorithm that pinpoints where the equation of fog or clouds meet in a region for us to deploy our solution or to collect it as a water source. So once we have these hotspots identified by our algorithm or fog spots, we set up the second unit of technology. It's called the water radar. And this is, this is a set of sensors that measures the, the identified point and tells us how much water we're going to get from fog and clouds versus how much water from rain, uh, what is the quality of the water, what are the estimated yields. We build a cost-benefit analysis for that particular point. And then the third unit, it's... Uh, the fog collectors, which are these huge membranes with hydrophilic properties that once the fog or the cloud uh, touches the membrane, it forces it to adhere. The droplets start building bigger and bigger until by gravity they fall into a gutter. And then depending on the application point, uh, an irrigation system, a cistern, artificial water mass, greenhouse, uh, filtration system, etc. And I know a big part of your work is really looking at democratizing access to water. And I think that is a real um, reality of, of these different weather patterns. We're seeing it unfairly impacting certain communities over others. So how, how do you weave that value into the work that you're doing as well? So uh, keeping in mind the mission 
by which the the whole permolution story began in California and, and what the main objective was, yes, were very much aligned with democratizing or introducing a new water source uh, to the world and uh, especially with, with the mindset of not leaving anyone behind. Uh, I know that it can get very tempting to sell to those who have the most money to sell it. Uh, we had situations where we could have just turned into another water bottle producing company, which uh, it's not it's not the main focus for us. We don't want to become a, a new problem to society. It's uh, if we rethink the the water bottles in a sustainable way and so on, it could be very interesting. We're trying to focus as much as possible as a startup. Um, but yes, we make sure that our projects have an impact. Uh, we make sure that we also quantify and measure how it will affect future generations, uh, how it will affect the ecosystems that we are. Uh, affecting or impacting while developing or deploying our solutions in in the terrain. So yes, it is very important for us. It's something that the whole executive team we have at heart. Uh, we were uh, quite devastated to have some of our most impactful impactful projects being put on hold because of the all USAD World Wildlife Foundation holes that happened at the Washington level since the beginning of the year. Uh, we are now thinking of opening our own foundation so we can fund our own projects for uh, humanitarian ecosystem development, conservation, and so on, while focusing on uh, projects for corporate ESG agendas and the big players and industries that need also our solution. So it's about finding that balance of, uh, yes, being financially sustainable, but also leaving a better world behind.